Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to this video tutorial on ESP.NET 4.5 for students at King Faisal University and for others who want to learn ESP.NET. This is part 9 in this series entitled Looping Statements in ESP.NET 4.5 using C Sharp. Looping statements allow us to repeat a statement or group of statements several times. There are three or you can say four looping statements in C Sharp. The for statement uses a counter that is initialized and either incremented or decremented. The repetition of statement continues while the condition is true. For each statement loops through the items in a set of data. With this, there is no need for a counter. Inside the parentheses are the data type, the variable to hold the item, the reserve word in, and the set of data or collection. The while statement, which can also be written as do while, continues to repeat the statements or statements while the condition is true. For activity number 9, we will create an ASP.NET website and place it in C ASP activity 9. We will create an ASP.NET web form named multiplication table that will allow a user to enter a number in a text box and upon clicking a button, generate the numbers multiplication table in a list. We will use for statement. Let's create our website, file new website. We'll put it in CASP activity 9. Now we'll create our web form. We'll call it multiplication table. We'll go to the design view. Let's put the table to format our objects. Uh, let's have maybe three rows and three columns. Then here, let's type number. In the next cell, we'll put a text box. And in the last column, we'll put a button. We'll change this to generate. Generate. Okay, and then in the center of the second column, we'll put a list box. Okay. We'll just change the width. To 150 okay I think that's good let's change the height to maybe 100 okay that's good try to resize it okay okay now we're ready for the code let's double click the button first let's uh, set the value in the text box uh, to a double so we're going to use convert to double the number that the user will enter in the text box. So this text box one that text. Okay, now the value that he enters has been converted to a double. We can now compute for the multiplication table using four. We'll start multiplying it by one up to ten. So the condition is up to x is less than or equal to 10. That will be our counter. And we will increment it. So 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 10. Okay, let's display the result automatically in list box 1. That items, that add, and we'll display them and format them at the same time and plus we'll put the asterisk to signify multiplication and then we'll add again the value of x so that it will start with the number times 1 up to times 10 and then we'll add the equal sign okay, and then the last is the product that is n times x close and semicolon okay let's let's try to look at it in the browser if i type 10 generate that will be 10 times 1 tenth. if i write 11 generate oh the only problem is that it's not clearing so maybe we can clear it every time we're going to 
click the button. So list box one that items that clear there. Don't forget the parentheses. So let's try to look at it again. Put seven generate correct seven other number three generate okay class. For our next activity, we will create another web form named GetSum that will allow a user to enter numbers inside the list box using text box and a button and will compute their sum after clicking another button. So we will need a label for that. So our next web form is GetSum. So we'll type GetSum. Let's go to the design view again. Let's utilize the table to format our objects. Sorry, maybe three only. So here we will put the list. Here we'll put the number that the user can add. And in the last one, we'll put the sum or the result, I think. Okay, then here we'll put the list box. We'll just change the width to 100. And the number, we'll put the text box. And then here we'll put a button to add values to the list box. And here another button to get the sum, to trigger the sum computation. And the result will be in a label, okay? So let's start with this button, the add button. So what are we going to do first? We will add in the list box one that items items there that add whatever is inside the list uh, the text box. So that is text box one that text correct. Now just to add. After that addition, we'll return the value of text box one that text to zero, and that we should set the focus back to text box one. So we'll focus. Okay. Now, how about the trigger when you get the sum, or when you click the sum? So first, let's have a variable for the sum value. Then we can use for each now, for each. So what data type uh, are we going to use from, if we're going to use list box, it should be data item. Oh no, I think it should be list item. List item there. And then our variable, let's say I, Reserve with in and then from the list box one that items correct. That's for each. Now we can start with our code to compute the sum. So sum will be equal to sum plus the value of the item. We'll use convert. To, let's just do convert it to integer this time and that will be the value of i its text property i think yeah we got it that's the sum now we will put the sum to label one that text is equal to sum and we have to convert it to string i think it's done here we have to put equal sign okay let's let's try it to our browse in our browser let's add some values 1 12 
uh, 23. Okay, now let's get the sun. Perfect. For our next activity, we'll create another web form called Factors that will allow a user to enter a number in a text box and will display in a list box its factors after clicking another button. You will use, we will use while well statement. Okay, so we'll create another web form and we'll call it Factors. Let's go to the design view. Let's again utilize a table, number of rows, maybe three, columns, two. Put here the number. And here the factors. Uh, we need the text box to hold the number. And then here a button. for the factors and in the factors we'll use a list box again just make it 100 okay let's try making our code so first let's clear don't forget to clear so that the uh, previous values will not appear again once we click the button. Items that clear. And we'll have to set uh, variables for the counter and for the number. For the number it will be coming from text box one and we'll just convert it to integer text box one dot text okay now we're ready to display and compute compute and display the factors so the condition is while x is less than or equal to n we will determine its factors. So that means including one in itself. So if n and you mod it to x and the result is zero, that means it's a factor. So we will display that value that in, in the list box that add X and it has to be converted to string. Okay, class. Correct. Then let's increment our X. Correct. Let's, let's go to the browser. What are the factors of 10? 1, 2, 5, and 10. What are the factors of 12? 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Congratulations, we just finished using looping statements in ASP.NET. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Maas